Good. I'm Darby Schlebusch. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how I do a bite for the flower appliance. I use little tongue depressors. They're cheap, they're easy to get hold of. And um, by using sound to find the position, the optimal position for the flower, the optimal producer position, um, that you don't need all the other fancy little ratchets and gimmicks. Right, all those things work. Um, it's a case of what's easier in your hands. All right. So what we do with a little tongue depressor is we make a few little holes in it, right? You can make as many or as few as you like. The idea is just to have something that will give it a bit of retention, otherwise the initial putty simply slips off. All right. So let's mix up some putty. The reason for the putty is to get a lock position and a stop for the mandible. The reason why I put that lock position on the mandible rather than on the maxilla is it's easier for me to move things around and mark them um, than trying to work from the bottom. All right, gently bite closed for me, all the way through until you feel it, and hold it just like that, just a gentle bite, not hard. The one thing to keep in mind all the time is to try and keep your little tongue depressor stick absolutely parallel with your tragus line. It gives you a reference all the time, and it makes sure that you don't tilt the mandible out into an uncomfortable position for the temporary mandibular joint. Bucky works well for these type of things, but you can use jet bite or any of the other uh, materials as well. Even temporary acrylic will work well. Good. So now we've got a really nice stable stop okay, on our little stick. Now we can start playing around and trying to get that position for the lower jaw. Good. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to ask Michelle to give us a nice snore. All right, she's lying flat on her back. Please remember that you can't do this in a semi-upright position or in a normal dental working position. You want your patient as far back as you can, quite probably even a little bit lower than this. All right, they've got to be flat. Okay, good. Michelle, give us a nice snore. Okay, and again, a bit louder if you can. Okay, give us another one. There we go. Okay. So now we're going to get our little stick in. I generally simply start with an edge to edge. Move a little bit forward with your mandible for me. Just remember to keep it parallel. Okay. Give us your snore again. Okay, it's already a little bit better. Okay, a little bit forward. Give us a snore again. There we go. A little bit forward. Snore again. There we go. So we now mark our position and that's why we put the stop on the bottom teeth so that I can make a pencil mark there. Open for me. Good. So there we have our little mark on our stick, all right? And that's where the snoring sound diminished the most. So we've got a fairly good idea, okay, it might not be perfect, but a good idea of the uh, amount of anterior translation that we need in that mandible. What we need out now, I need to have to look, look at and see how much actual opening we, we need. So we simply take a second little stick, put it on top of the first one, take your pencil, uh, remember to mark your position. All right. And we're going to go through exactly the same process again. Pop that on there, bite closed for me. Lower jaw just a little bit forward, so we're back onto our mark. Give me a nice snore again. That sounds good. A little bit further forward. Another nice snore. And a little bit further forward. Another one. Uh, it's actually slowly getting worse, so you go back a bit for me. Open. That's excellent. Open again for me. And same thing. Take our third stick. So the idea is just to do a comparative analysis. Okay, your ear gets better and better and better at doing this. Because you've got the putty on there, you'll see things actually stay pretty stable where they need to be. All right, let's make the final little mark so we don't lose our position. Good, and now we've got to get everything nice and stable so that the jaw stays in that position when we scan. Easiest way to do it again, jet pipe temporary material, putty, whatever you've got handy. And now we can fix that position. 
The main reason for doing this is that you do not want any movement while you're busy scanning. And very often, once we put the bigger scanners on the inside there, um, we start getting the jaw compensating. So if we can lock it in, so much the better. All right. Obviously, you can use the same thing and put a roll of putty there and take a bite if you're doing the whole thing analog. But uh, yeah, I think the digital age is upon us. And then we get over into scanning. And in this case, it's just a case of scanning the buckle corridors, getting your, your bite locked in. If your scanner battles to do this right, start at the front okay, and get a little bit of your um, uh, 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 stick and, and, and the um, putty in and then scan backwards and it's inclined to keep the reference a lot better. Good. And then obviously we go into the other side. You see the patient pulls her mouth and that's why it's important to have the teeth locked in. Otherwise that pull will distort the position. Good. We can take that out. Good. And it is as simple as that. Right. Um, and that way, most of the cases, you can get your um, 